and welcome to episode one of the screencast series on getting started with the MVC wrappers for Kendo UI. In this episode, I'll walk you through the installation of the wrappers and show you the basics of how to use them. I'll look at a couple of the MVC controls that the Kindle UI wrappers provide by adding some widgets to a web page, and then I'll populate those widgets with some sample data. To get started, you of course need Visual Studio and at least MVC version 3. Now, there's two ways to install the MVC wrappers. There's the manual way, which is covered in depth in the documentation. The other way is to use the add-in installer. And you can use the installer even if you are just doing a trial evaluation. The installer will automatically keep you up to date and it will additionally install some templates to make it super easy to get up and running. After running the installer, I'm going to choose File, New Project, and I'll select Telerik and then Web. And I can choose a Kindo UI application template. The next screen will allow me to select the version of MVC that I want to use, my preferred view engine, and which Kindo UI theme I want to use as well. If you decide you want to change themes later, it's very easy. It also provides a section to include some editor templates. And these are important for the grid. We won't be using them in this episode, but we will in subsequent episodes, so I'm going to go ahead and include them. The CDN support references the Kindo UI JavaScript CDN instead of loading the scripts locally. This is something that you can also change later if you don't select it and then you decide that you want it. I'm going to deselect it for this demo project. Now Visual Studio will create the project, copying in the correct Kindo UI JavaScript and CSS files, the HTML and link helper libraries, and make all the necessary configuration changes in the web config file. I can see that the Kindo UI CSS files have been added to the content folder. All of the available themes have been added in case I want to use a different one. In the scripts folder, all of the required Kindo UI JavaScript files have been added. Now, Kindo UI is modular, so you can use as much or as little of it as you want to. For this demo, we'll be using the kindo.all.min file, which contains all of the framework and all of the widgets. All right, let's open up the layout page and have a look. As you can see, the Kindo UI CSS files have already been added at the top, as well as the necessary JavaScript files and jQuery. If we have a look inside of the home view, you can see that a Kindo UI panel bar has already been added to the page as an example. I can run the project and see the familiar ASP.NET MVC template with a Kindo UI panel bar. Let's back up and take a look at what it takes to add our own widget to the page. I'm going to remove the panel bar and add a calendar control. The Kindo UI wrappers are HTML helpers with a fluent API. That means that each method returns the instance of the widget, so we can just continue to configure it by chaining off of each previous method. To create a calendar, all I have to do is specify a name, which will then become the item's unique ID. Now that I have a Kendo UI calendar, if I inspect the control, I can see that Kendo UI has generated the necessary HTML and JavaScript to create this calendar. This is an important point to understand because once I start dealing with data sources for these controls, I have to remember that I'm not going to be iterating a data source on the server in order to render this HTML. Instead, I'm really just configuring the Kindo UI data source that the JavaScript controls use in the browser. To illustrate the point about generating client-side JavaScript, I'll build a drop-down list and bind it to some local data. First, I'll build a simple generic list of strings. This will be the data that shows up in the drop-down list. Then I'll create a drop-down list using the MVC wrappers and give it a name. All I have to do to get this data into the drop-down list is call the bindTo method and pass in the variable name. Now, I know what you're thinking. I said I wasn't going to iterate and render the control on the server, and that's true. It's not going to do that. What it is going to do, though, is convert this string list into a JavaScript array so that the browser will understand it and be able to use it with the Kindo UI dropdown list. Let me show you what I mean. When I run this, we can see that the Kindo UI dropdown list is now populated with values. If I look at the source for the page, I can see that the server sent down all of the JavaScript that I needed to get this dropdown list up and running, including the array of items that were serialized from the generic list into the JavaScript array. I can also just pass this list of items from the server. If I move the items to the home controller and then return them with the view, I can specify a model for the page and bind the dropdown list directly to the model. The result is exactly the same. 
The list of items is converted to a string array by Kendo UI and placed in the generated JavaScript configuration. As you can see, the MVC wrappers are very simple to install and very easy to work with. Using the wrappers instead of the straight JavaScript also has the added benefit of getting validation and that way you will get a descriptive error if your code is malformed so you don't have to wonder what actually went wrong. What I've shown here is only the first step in taking advantage of the MVC wrappers. There's a lot more to show and a lot of features that can be facilitated through the use of the MVC wrappers, including the configuration of remote data sources, lazy loading of hierarchical data, server-side paging, custom editors for grids, and much, much more. I haven't even shown you how to bind the data on your server with Ajax yet. We also haven't touched on what Kindo UI provides in the way of link helpers to help you with your dynamic queries. In the next episode, I'll take a look at what it takes to create a Kindo UI tree view with data from the server and have it lazy load the data hierarchy when a tree node is expanded all using Ajax.